Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room. Today's video is all about airplanes. Recently, actually a while ago now, I made a zombroidery quilt. It was red work embroidery. I have to stop saying zombroidery. Red work embroidery quilt. And I enjoyed making that so much that I've now chosen to make another one or something very similar. It's airplane themed this time. So I've made one block already. This is the A10 Warthog. White on blue is gonna give the vibe of like a blueprint. So it's pretty simple, isn't it? We're gonna make 30 of these. I made 30 zombroidery blocks and these are 15 by 15. That's a little more space. And to get my designs, I've went online and I've purchased these airplane coloring books. So I've already selected my favorite airplanes, not out of here, just I have a list of airplanes that are my favorite. If they're in the coloring book, I'll use that design. If they're not in the coloring book, I'll have to come up with something else. I'll have to look up a picture and see if I can trace the picture into a line drawing that looks good. If it looks good, I'll do it that way. Some of the airplanes I wanna include, like there was this one plane that I'm obsessed with. It's like a car that you could drive on the street and then it turns into a plane. They only built like a small handful. These are good drawings of these airplanes. These are World War II. Yeah, I probably don't want a swastika on it. Oh, this is the Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt is the one that, that A-10 was kind of, because A-10 is really the Thunderbolt 2. I saw this airplane last year when I was on my way to Japan. We landed somewhere and there were um, Jazz Def planes over there and they have this plane that lands on the water and it's kind of ugly. It has a really goofy look but I want to include it just because I saw it and that was the first time I saw it and I thought it was so weird. I'm interested in weird airplanes, ones with like uh, interesting history to them. The only Russian airplane I'm interested in is probably the AN-225 Miria because it has the biggest payload in the world. Matter of fact, here it is. It's the largest and heaviest airplane ever built. So maybe I'll do the Miria. Maria, I don't know. It means dream in Ukrainian. Seven pilots, wow. Right, so you know the drill pretty much. I have my transfer paper here. I have these. There's 15 so far. I'm gonna have 30 if I'm done. I have to go um, to the fabric store and get more because it's all I have. So transfer paper, transfer the image on and do it. So let's do one. First, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select 15. So let me do that. I experimented with different ways of transferring the images to the fabric. So I used transfer paper and I also used heat erasing pens and sometimes I traced it directly from my iPad. I selected airplanes that I thought were interesting or historically significant or that had some kind of interesting story behind them and here are some of the airplanes that I selected. First we have the Sopwith Camel, a very significant British World War I era biplane that used to engage in low altitude, low speed dogfights. It was also the airplane of Snoopy the Flying Ace whose dogfights with the Red Baron are legendary. Next we have the Spirit of the St. Louis, formerly known as Ryan NYP. This is the plane that Charles Lindbergh flew from New York to Paris in the world's first solo non-stop transatlantic flight. Lindbergh had to sit in the cockpit which was 36 by 32 by 52 inches for almost two days and two nights without being able to stretch his legs. He also sat on a wicker seat that was intentionally uncomfortable so that he wouldn't fall asleep. The second person to fly across the Atlantic and the first woman to do so was Amelia Earhart in her Lockheed Vega 5B in 1932. She also flew it across North America and she was the first woman to do that among many other aviation records. 
She disappeared over the Pacific in 1937 in a Lockheed 10E Electra. I wanted to include all the airplanes that I was interested in, but I needed 30 and I only came up with 25. So I called my dad, who is an Air Force retiree, and asked him to contribute some as well. Yep. Um, okay, so we're on the air. <laughs> Alright. Um, so I need five more ideas. Well, you want to put a P fifty one on there. Cadillac what? of the skies. P fifty one. Yeah, that was the uh top fighter aircraft of World War Two for the United States. P fifty one Mustang. Now you also want to put on an F four. Why? An F four Phantom. Because that was the Air Force's plane in Vietnam. Okay. Next is the Grumman TBF Avenger. This is the plane that a flight of five of these disappeared over the Bermuda Triangle in 1945. The flight was a naval training flight that took off from Fort Lauderdale on December 5th, led by Lieutenant Charles Taylor. At some point, Taylor believed his compass was malfunctioning, and then heavy wind and rain came in suddenly, and the whole flight was completely disoriented. Taylor apparently confused some of the islands of the Bahamas for the Florida Keys and mistakenly thought they needed to fly northeast. This took them further out over the water where they disappeared. Despite a huge search effort, no trace was ever found. Based on what I've read online, even though Taylor's compass malfunctioned and with the heavy wind and rain, that still doesn't explain how they got so disoriented. Other strange things about this incident is that apparently Taylor didn't want to fly that day and asked to be excused from the flight, and that request was denied. And also, they had a rescue frequency that they could have used, but not even one of the five planes used it. So how exactly all five airplanes disappeared without a trace is still a mystery. Next, I have the flying car. This is the Taylor Aero car. Six of these were built in 1949. You have the car that can drive on the road, and it towed the folding wings behind it. The wings could be unfolded and installed by one person in five minutes. The car engine would drive the wheels of the car on the road, and then when you flip up the rear license plate, you could attach a pusher propeller, and the car engine would now propel the airplane. They never mass-produced these, and there's only one left that still flies in Florida. planes, you got to do my favorite plane that I flew on a lot, a C-141, Starlifter. Now, there's a famous C-141. It's called the Freedom Bird. Uh, it's the only C-141 still on the active roll. They flew the uh, American prisoners out of Vietnam on it. It's still flying? Yeah. Every once in a year, once a year, it takes a flight. And you know where it flies to? Randolph Air Force Base. When we were stationed at Randolph, I went and saw it. We walked through it. It was pretty cool. They had all the POW signatures on it and everything. I was on a C-141 that lost two engines. What happened? We landed. It's pretty quick. <laughs> now, since you were stationed at Randolph, you want to get the T-38. That was the training jet the Air Force used at Randolph that flew over your head all the time. When we were riding our bikes? Yes. <laughs> okay. Next, I want to talk about the FH-227 Delta, which is really a very unremarkable airplane, but I'm obsessed with the story of Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571, also known as the Andes Flight Disaster or the Miracle of the Andes. 
It was a flight chartered by a rugby team and all of their friends and family to take them to a match in Chile in 1972. The co-pilot started his descent too early and the plane crashed in the Andes. 29 out of the 45 passengers were killed, but 16 of the students survived for 72 days through extreme hardships. They had no food. It was extremely cold. There were avalanches that buried some of the people, and they had no choice other than to consume the frozen dead bodies in order to survive. They had no survival training or mountain climbing experience, and yet two of the survivors who were nearly starving to death climbed a 15,000-foot mountain peak 38 miles over 10 days without any equipment, no food. They made it to Chile to seek help, and all surviving 16 people were rescued. The boys felt so horrible at what they did to survive that the Catholic Church came forward with an official statement saying that cannibalism was not a sin in this case because it was only for survival. They made a movie about it with Ethan Hawke in 1993 called Alive. Next is the Harrier Jump Jet. This is an attack aircraft known for its ability to take off and land vertically. I know this plane from the story of John Leonard and the Pepsi Points lawsuits. In 1996, Pepsi started a promotion where you could earn points and cash them in for prizes like gym bags and t-shirts. The commercial showed that you could get a Harrier Jump Jet for 7 million Pepsi Points. So John Leonard actually produced 7 million Pepsi points and went on to sue PepsiCo for the Harrier Jump Jet. He lost the lawsuit, but the Netflix documentary about it was pretty amusing. It's called Pepsi Where's My Jet. What happened on that C5 that one time? I was flying from Washington, D.C. to England. And we were flying up, up around the coast, around the, up through Canada, up through the poles in that way so they don't fly over water. And we were somewhere over New York, and the plane just dropped. Just, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it just, I mean, it just all happened so fast. The only thing I really, really remember is um, the guy, a guy was uh, in front of me, and his coffee went up in the air, and it came back down and went in the cup. How far did it drop? They said it was like 5,000 feet maybe, but it's been a long time. I don't know. What stopped it from dropping? We were told there was something in the engine that malfunctioned. All I can tell you is I thought it went deathly silent. Okay? But I don't know. The passengers sit all the way up in the tail. Uh-huh. So, I mean, like, and there's no windows. You can't see crap. You don't oh. know what's happening. And, you know, it's like when you're flying, the, the pilots, they don't pay any attention to you. And they were like three football fields away anyway. A C-5 is so big. And then I was sitting next to my buddy, and he grabbed me, and he said, tell me about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and then it stabilized. That is wild. Yeah. I'm surprised you're still alive. Well, and you know, for about seven or eight years, I got really scared to get on a plane. And I had to keep on flying. It kind of stunk. But I mean, I just, I couldn't quit because I didn't want to give in to my fear. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, I'm scared to death, but if I die, I'm going to die. I'm getting on that damn plane. <laughs> Suck on a Capri Sun and know that this is God's plan. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your service.
Next, we have the world's largest airplane. It's the Antonov 225 Maria from the Soviet Union, designed in the 80s. Its purpose was to transport equipment for the space program. They only built one of these, and it's in Ukraine, but it was destroyed last year by the Russians in the invasion. Apparently, the Ukrainians have plans to rebuild it, and I wish them success. Lastly, I want to tell you about the Shinmaiwa US 2 seaplane. This is the plane I talked about at the beginning, and frankly, I do find it to look a bit goofy. But I saw one in Japan a couple years ago, and I was very intrigued. This plane can take off and land on water at extremely low speeds and in very short distances, and with waves up to 3 meters high. After I finished all 30 of the airplane blocks, I sewed them together. The weird thing is, all of this blue was from the same bolt, but yet many of them look slightly different shades. I don't really mind it, it kind of adds interest. And you can see the black batting. I forgot I used this until I saw the footage. I really didn't need to use black batting. I just bought two black battings a long time ago and I completely forgot why, so I'm just using it because I have it. I feel like the only way to quilt an embroidery quilt is by hand and I knew I was going to do a grid because I wanted to give grid lines like on a blueprint. I basted it with needle and thread and then lap quilted the grid on. So that's all for today's video. If you like this project, please leave a comment below, like and subscribe to my channel, and please come again.